laser discs, and some CDs. We got two little dogs licking their balls on the screen. And now it's time for the show. Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, I've got some of the components of the build we're going to do today. Uh, I, I just I do want to talk about this motherboard a little bit because it is nothing special. Uh, it actually might present more problems than it does uh, benefits to our project, but it's something I just kind of have. I, I picked up not too too long ago at like a flea market sort of thing. Um, and I didn't really have any specific reason to pick it up. I, I've already have plenty of computers uh, and motherboards that fill the niche that this kind of does, but I don't know, did you ever come across like a motherboard or a piece of equipment that for some reason you just wanted to pick it up and, and, and make something with it and make a build with it, even though it didn't really do anything that anything else you already had didn't do? That makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of picked this thing up. And uh, it's not a bad board, and I just, I just wanted to make a build with it. Just not really any specific reason, I just want to use that motherboard. Uh, so, uh, right here is the case we're going to use. I kind of like this case. It's obviously yellowed, it's got scuffs on it. I might do some more uh, cleaning. I did a kind of a surface clean um, with cleaner and ammonia and wipes, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to do the retro bright on it, but I don't know. I, I don't know, I might. Um, I do kind of like this case. This is an ATX case. Uh, it already has a CD drive. I don't even know if this drive works. Um, that was just with it, the case. Same with the 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. Uh, I do like this this little design down here. And you could put a, a case badge right there. And um, yeah, I like it. It's got a little mark though where the previous sticker was. The previous sticker was for a Celeron. Um, so it had a Pentium 3 motherboard in here, which didn't have a Celeron installed, it was just a straight up Pentium 3. I might use that board for another project. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. But I, I kind of like this case, and uh, I just want to use it. So let's take a look at this board over here. Alright, so here's our motherboard in question. Now, I cannot identify this motherboard, and believe me, I've tried. Um, the closest I can find to any kind of identification is, and maybe you guys can help me and then maybe I could utilize this better in future projects, but um, that's the closest I found for identification. That little number right there, E139761. Um, so I think this is an OEM board, because uh, I have put in, plugged it into a power supply and it posts, and it gives you a Sony splash screen. And it, it, the BIOS is kind of standard, but kind of not. So it, I believe this was like an OEM board for a Sony computer, maybe a, a VIO, I believe they're pronounced. Um, but it also looks like it would fit a standard Socket 7 case. So it doesn't look like it's a proprietary form factor. Um, I even found in my collection a little backplate that more or less fits... Um, See here, it's not quite. See, it, it more or less fits there. Uh, I think the only thing that's off is over here. The PS2 are a little bit off. I might have to shave some some metal off. I don't know. And of course, there's nothing right there. But uh, yeah, this might work. Um, so I think this will fit in my ATX case. Uh, but yeah, uh, if any of you guys have any information on this board, I, I found boards on the internet that looked close, but nothing that quite exactly matched this board. I, I believe this is an Intel manufactured board, um, but again, I, I, don't, I couldn't find a manual for it. Um, but it does, it is kind of interesting. So it doesn't have AGP, this is just straight socket 7. Um, we'll take a look at the CPU first. Uh, I thought the CPU was kind of interesting. Uh, it's just a, it's a classic uh, Pentium 166 megahertz MMX. It has the, I kind of liked it, how it has the heat sink and fan sort of already attached to the CPU. I always kind of like that, the official uh, Intel heat sink fan, so that's kind of cool. Um, I believe this is a, like a voltage regulator right here, and just a standard ATX power supply and floppy. Uh, this jumper here, uh, it says VRE, I think I don't know what that does exactly. Something to do with the voltage regulator. Now, a bummer about this board 
it doesn't seem like you can change the voltage. So I feel like it gets just stuck at 3.3 volts. Uh, so you're just kind of limited to um, a certain range of socket 7 Pentiums and maybe, maybe some other CPUs that use that 3.3 volts. Uh, but I wanted to maybe put a K5 in here to experiment, but I could not find any jumpers or anything that would uh, kick it up to 3.5 volts. So I don't know if that's possible. Uh, maybe K5 will just work in it. Uh, maybe there's something somewhere that I'm not seeing. I didn't see anything in the BIOS either, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, here's the RAM. 72-pin uh, RAM. I have no idea what's the max. I'm not even sure what's installed in it right now. Um, let's take a look right here. Again, this is another kind of OEM thing I tend to see is the connections are kind of in a straight row. This is to hook up your your power and your HD LED and your speaker and reset. I don't see anything about yeah the infrared. Um, yeah, and then we have some jumpers here. And thankfully, we do have some instructions silk screened in. Um, this is mostly just to set your clock speed, so you can set your front side bus anywhere from 50 to 66. Um, this one right here is for the bus. It says bus frequency, but it's just, it just looks like your CPU multiplier. Um, we've got settings for 1.5 to 3. Okay, and these other ones are just for like, uh, it looks like, uh, like clearing the CMOS battery, um, uh, maybe clearing the password, uh, something like that. That's what it looks like. But these other jumpers are for IDE right here. Uh, this board does have built-in VGA. Uh, it uses the 3D RAGE chip, um, and it looks like this is the memory for it. Don't know how much memory. Um, 3D RAGE chip, uh, in my opinion, is, is it's not a very good chip. But early... 3D accelerator chip, um, not very good. I believe it's just kind of a uh, ATA Mach 64 maybe with some 3D features thrown in. Uh, just not a great chip. Um, there's some some jumper things here. I don't know if they're actually for jumpers, but it says wave on them. So maybe that's for some kind of wave table connector. Maybe for uh, with those gold finger cards that connect, maybe. Uh, the one cool thing is right here, it does look like it has a Yamaha OPL FM chip uh, built into it, which is pretty cool. So you get built in FM support. So look here, right here, here's your audio out. So we have uh, built in Yamaha FM, which is pretty cool. Parallel, uh, there's your VGA. Uh, no serial, but I have a little doggle with two serial connectors, and then PS2 and uh, USB, which is pretty cool to have uh, built-in USB. It looks like, when you look at it, it looks like a super early uh, Socket 7 board, but you do get uh, built-in USB. So, don't know if that's USB 1.0 or 1.1, I have no idea. But, um, yeah, I cannot find any information on this board exactly, so... If anyone knows, uh, let me know. If anyone has any ideas about uh, voltage settings, if this thing will run a K5, uh, something along those lines. Um, I know it's there's an MMX on here, so it does do the split voltage thing. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think I could probably put a, a K6 in this uh, build. I, I don't know. Um, so... I'm going to see, first off, I'm just going to see if this thing will fit inside the case, and then we'll kind of go from there. Alright, well, a little messy, but uh, the motherboard did fit in the case just fine. Unfortunately, that back plate, uh, I just couldn't get it to fit right, and I got tired of fighting with it, so that's not really uh, necessary. Um, I didn't go over the chipset before. I believe it's the Triton 2 chipset. Um, the HX uh, it supports USB, which I believe... That, wait, where is it? I think that's the USB controller right there. Uh, it can, uh, supports USB. I believe the max is 512 megabytes. I don't know if this particular board supports that, but technically I think the chipset does. Um, so, what? yeah, this there's this weird... This is like an audio connector, but it's like a weird connector. Um, it's short anyways. Uh, I'm going to disconnect this and... Try to just find a normal one to connect to the CD drive. 
still don't know if that drive works. Um, so what's the plan with this build? I think we're just going to go as is. Um, just going to keep that processor in there. We're just going to build this as if it was, what, like 1997 or 96. Uh, we have the OPL chip on board. Uh, we have that uh, Rage 3D. I believe I had a video before where we, we talked about the, the Rage, the original Rage 3D chip before. Uh, it's, it's not very good. So we'll have some fun with that chip. We'll see what we can do with this machine. Uh, it's, it's not too dissimilar from my AST I had at that same time period. Um, maybe actually a little bit better. I, that AST I had had like a um, Trident card, or Trident video chip uh, built in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think we're going to upgrade this. I don't think I'm going to add any expansion cards to this right now. I'm just going to go with, it's got everything it needs built in. So we'll just see how that goes. So in kind of keeping with the period correctness with this machine, we're going to try this uh, Fujitsu hard drive. I think it's from like 97 or 96. Um, it's only like, I think it's slightly less than 3 gigabytes. Um, so hopefully it works. Uh, I think we'll go with, you know, Windows 95 for this guy. And, um... We'll just see how it does. I've never really got USB to work with Windows 95, even Windows 95C, which is supposed to support it, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, don't really need USB to work, but it would just make things a little bit easier. And this case is weird, too. Uh, the sides kind of go on it, both sides, and then they're held in by the top. The top is like a separate piece. Um, once you put the sides on, the top slides over, and then you screw the top on, and the top holds the sides on. It's it's kind of kind of weird. All right, here we go. Uh, I do have Windows 95 version B installed. Uh, installation went pretty smooth. Um, I haven't messed around with the machine too much. I put this nice uh, Sony wallpaper up there because it is a Sony board. And uh, you'll see when I do some screen capturing in a minute for when we look at games and stuff that... Uh, there is a little Sony logo that pops up when you start the computer. It makes a little jingle sound. Uh, so I figured I'd put a, like a Sony wallpaper up. Um, I did increase the RAM from 32 megabytes to 64 megabytes. I feel that's a little bit more appropriate. Um, and I did, um, when installing Windows 95, it did install the drivers for the sound on the motherboard and for the Rage 3D, but I did find uh, more current ATI Rage 3D drivers, which I installed. So I installed the most current video drivers uh, I could find. And one very cool thing, for the first time ever, I got USB to work. Now this is an old Dolphin 2GB uh, USB drive I picked up when I worked at a grocery store a very long time ago. And um, it's, it's not quite as um, easy as with Windows 98, but I had to, you know, I installed Windows 95 it only works with B and C, I believe. And then I had to install the USB supplemental drivers. And then I found some other drivers on a, a website. Um, gee, I forget what they're called now. And I kind of, when I put in a USB drive, it asks for drivers. And I sort of direct uh, the search to these special drivers I found. And it, it works. I'll actually show you here in a moment. All right, there's CPU-Z running. We've got our MMX processor, 166 megahertz, and uh, there's the motherboard model number. That answers my question from earlier, and yes, I was able to look it up and find the jumper charts and all that. Uh, 64 megabytes of EDO RAM, and um, uh, nothing really in the graphics there. All right, all right, and as you can see, the removable drive, that is the USB a uh, mass storage device, and then there it is. It is working in Windows 95. I know it's probably not a big thing to some of you guys, but I've just never been able to get it to work in Windows 95 before for whatever reasons. Um, I've only tried it a couple times before, but it just always ended in failure, and it worked this time, so yay, happy about that. And, uh, yep, here is the machine uh, posting and booting up. It's got that little jingle and then the Sony logo. And you had a little nice little starting status bar there uh, that goes up as it uh, prepares to boot into Windows 95.
All right, let's take a look at PC player here. Uh, benchmark and see how well it does. Uh, we've got that Rage 3D chip, which is it's really just a, like a Mach 64 chip with some 3D features tacked onto it. It apparently on a you know paper that chip supposedly looks pretty good, but in practice it's it's not. Um, I'd probably rather have a Verge to be honest. Um, see some glitches there with the black around some of those trees I just actually just noticed that I didn't notice that when I was actually running the benchmark but uh, now in editing yeah I think that's a glitch I'm looking at it a little editing screen but yeah so <laughs> speaking of the video chip um, yeah at least with the uh, at least with the verge you'd have some s3d games and I actually have a video I'm planning coming up where we're gonna take a closer look at a machine with a, a verge card in it but anyways um, yeah, what what is that? 7.1 there with uh, PC player bench. All right, let's move on. Okay, so I tried to run uh, Final Reality benchmark here, and it wouldn't even run. It said it did not detect a 3D um, accelerator or no direct 3D hardware uh, found, which doesn't really surprise me with this chip. Um, although the weird thing is, I swear I remember trying to run this before I updated to the latest drivers. And it actually ran, although it, it still gave me some kind of error about not detecting like a 3D accelerator. But it still ran the program like very, very poorly. Um, but this time it just it won't even start up with these uh, with the newer ATI drivers. I don't know something going on there with the drivers. But I, I think regardless of what drivers you use, it doesn't work well at all with Final Reality, uh, at least in my experience here with this machine. And uh, here we are in display properties with the drivers. You get all kinds of little options. You can, you know, adjust the image and move it around. Uh, you know, a little bit of extra things than you'd normally get just with the standard display properties. Um, there, you got like a, some woman's face from the 90s looking at us. Go into settings, and you get uh, you can adjust the display area there, um, the screen and the desktop. It's a 640 by 480. And uh, you know, your standard stuff. Alright, so let's take a look at the sound drivers really quickly. Um, now I didn't update these or anything, I just used what installed automatically when I installed Windows. Um, you got your quality settings, turn reverb on and off. Uh, MPU, you could do external for hooking up an external device, or you can use soft GM, soft general MIDI. Um, and uh, in the gameplay footage coming up, unfortunately, you're not going to hear any sound. Um, that's because I had an issue this time when I recorded all the game footage. I did it all at once, and it seemed like it was working. I did it, and I tested it, and I was like, oh, okay, I can, you can hear it. Um, but unfortunately, there was an issue with my setup at the moment, which I was moving things around. Um, so something must not have been corrected, like, completely, because uh, the sound would just keep continuously, uh, like, cut out. Um, where it was just too distracting and terrible, so I had to, to mute it so we won't be hearing any of the sound of the gameplay coming up. Unfortunately, I don't have the inclination or the time to go back and recapture all the footage with the sound, um, so I'll just try to narrate uh, best I can over the gameplay coming up. But the sound, it, it sounds okay. Um, I didn't do a lot of FM stuff. I played a lot of later stuff with the, the GM through the soft GM, and it sounds okay. I mean, it's not the greatest, but it's it's pretty good, and the, the digital effects, uh, like the voices and stuff, they sound fine. I didn't really have any trouble with uh, a lot of these games with, like, getting the sound to work. Uh, a lot of them just seem to work, but again, with these videos, it's an extremely small sample of games we're looking at. So, first game we're going to look up at uh, here is uh, Descent 2, and I'm playing it through uh, real MS-DOS mode. All right, and here's Descent 2, uh, at least the demo for it, and it seemed to play just fine, what you'd expect on a, a Pentium 166 uh, MMX, perfectly playable. Um, I, I need to play more games. I, I actually have the full version of this game somewhere, but um, and the first one as well, but uh, I've never actually played them except for like the demos <laughs> for what I'm doing these benchmarks as part. Ugh, sorry, benchmarking um, and looking at games for these videos, but I looks like a game. 
Actually, it's, it looks like a game that might give me motion sickness. Um, I remember early on, uh, like, Doom kind of gives me... I have, a, I have a little bit of that problem with motion sickness with certain games, at least if I'm, like, close to the screen. Um, seems like if I'm farther away, like on a couch and I'm playing on a console, it's no problem, but uh, sometimes with computers, when I'm sitting up close, like, I can only play stuff like Doom and, like, Descent for so long, and I'll start getting, like, a little bit of a headache or, like, motion sickness. Um, yeah, unfortunately. It's, it's not too bad, and it takes a while to kick in, but it does seem to happen. Um, so, as you can probably notice, I don't really know. I, I know what I'm kind of supposed to do in this game. I'm looking for... I think I'm looking for, like, people to pick up, or maybe that's the first game. I don't know, I didn't read the, uh, the intro, but I'm, I'm flying around and I'm shooting stuff, and it's, um, yeah, perfectly serviceable here. So let's move on to the next game to look at. And, uh, speak of the devil, it's Doom 2. Um, yeah, so obviously if something like Descent ran fine. Uh, Doom 2 should run fine, too. Well, that's not always the case. Some, uh, video chips have issues with... Um, the VGA mode that at least the first Doom uses. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing Doom 2 uses the exact same uh, VGA modes, but there are some some later uh, video cards. You'd be surprised how badly they'll play Doom if because they don't like correctly support the uh, the VGA mode that, that Doom uses or the VESA mode or uh, whatever. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, here's Doom 2 running just fine. Um, here, I'm gonna cut to the audio real quick just. Just to give you guys an idea of the issue I was talking about earlier, um, I think maybe just one of my cables wasn't plugged in securely or something, but this is what it's doing. So yeah, okay. Anyways, on to the next game to look at. So this is Battle Cruiser 3000 AD. And I have no clue how to play this game, like, in the slightest. I don't know how to move the ship. Um, I barely was able to figure out how to, like, switch turrets, turrets and, like, fire the gun. Um, <laughs> well, it wasn't that hard. But, yeah, I have no idea what to do in this game or how to play this game. Um, never featured this. Never. This is the first time I ever even installed and tried playing this game. It looks pretty cool. Um... Kind of reminds me of Elite a little bit. Um, it's it's something I'd have to like read the manual or you know mess around with to really figure out how to play it. But um, this machine seems to play it okay. But it's not like I got into combat or anything. I just kind of started it and sat there and fired my weapons at nothing. And eh, this machine tended to handle that pretty well. <laughs> There's some. Mm, Lens flare? I don't know. Maybe that was decent lens flare for the time. It's, eh, I don't know. Looks looks okay. Seems to run okay. Just sitting there. All right. Um, that's about all I'm gonna get from this game. So let's move on to the next. All right, and this is Silent Thunder A10 Tank Killer 2. Uh, this is another game I I have a lot of like military flight sims and like I never really played them there's a couple I used to play a lot when I was younger um oh there was one on Amiga I used to play I used to play I think it was F FA18 on the Amiga there's another one on the Amiga I used to play a lot like strike fighter or joint strike fighter or fighter bomber I think it was fighter bomber anyways I used to mess around and play that game a lot as a kid but yeah I need to play some more of these uh flight sims. Maybe I'll do a video on, you know, like military flight sims or something one of these days. Uh, but yeah, this game ran just fine. Although I've heard that this game runs pretty well on most uh, systems. I, I think I heard that somewhere. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> but um, this is also an interesting game as it has trouble running on anything but Windows 95. I believe this is one of the few games that has issues running on Windows 98. And I believe I, I have tried that in the past. And um, I've tried running this game on Windows 98 and you will get an error. Which is very unusual because it's like 98, 99% of games. I made that statistic up but it seems pretty accurate. 99% of games that run on Windows 95 uh, tend to run on Windows 98 exactly the same like without any issues but I believe this game does throw an error if you try to run it on Windows 98 but there's probably a patch out there or workaround there almost 
always is. Uh, I assume it's probably some simple reason that it doesn't uh, work on Windows. And when I say it doesn't work, I think I just mean it like it doesn't install. If you can get it installed, I believe it, it should work fine. But um, some kind of issue there. Like I said, there's probably a simple patch or something. I haven't really looked it up. Um, let's get to some gameplay here with this. And uh, here I am, aimlessly flying over Columbia, I believe. Um, forget what the exact mission was. Um, usually, like I said, I need to, to actually read the manual and mess around with these games more than just quickly installing them and seeing if they'll run for these videos. But uh, usually there's like a little waypoint thing on the HUD that tells you where to go, but I didn't see one uh, for some reason. So I was just kind of randomly flying around and shooting at the ground. But um, I think I eventually did get uh, like a missile came out of nowhere. Or maybe it was like a, a fighter jet that got on my tail and shot me down. But I eventually did uh, die, but I didn't actually see any enemies. But the, the game plays just fine. Uh, I didn't have any issues with it, so... Alright, yeah, let's watch me die. Yeah, I think it was a fight, enemy fighter jet that eventually shot me down there. I just seen it fly past. Forgot I even seen it. And it should, uh, something should start. Oh, oh, I hit the side of the mountain. There, I'm dead. Alright, let's take a look at the next game. So you're thinking, oh, 3D Rage doesn't seem to be that terrible. I haven't seen too many glitches. And then you run Tomb Raider 2, and um, <laughs> you get this. Uh, so, I mean, technically it's playing, um, but, um, yeah, there's, like, no, uh, I mean, there's color, but there's no textures. It's just like this, like a, looks like a 3D model demo. <laughs> <laughs> like there's just no textures and um, stuff and then the frame rate's not fantastic either uh, but I mean like technically it's it's playing um, so yeah there's Tomb Raider 2 again another series of games that I'd love to play one day but I I never did. I never had Tomb Raider even back when it came out um, everyone was a fan of Tomb Raider and I just never really played it I, I think I've played like 30 or 40 minutes of the first game and I liked it but I just never really um never really got back to playing it and uh but I wanna one of these days one of these days but uh, I will not be playing Tomb Raider 2 on this machine uh unless I put in another video card a uh, different video card but yeah, yeah Tomb Raider 2 uh next and for the final video, or the final game we're going to look at here is Unreal, which surprisingly worked without any hassle. I just first time clicking the icon and loading it up, and it just worked. Um, now right here we're looking at it running at 640 by 480 uh, You can get a little bit better results with a lower resolution of 320 by 240 Let's take a look at that here one second. Alright, and here's Unreal running at uh, 320 by 240 so it's a little bit smoother a um, little bit better frame rate there but yeah it's it's running I was kinda surprised but um, yeah it's it's not great but you know it's not half bad so uh, let's take a look at a little bit of actual gameplay footage this footage coming up uh, it is gonna be at 640 by 480 uh, so let's take a look here and here is the game uh, running I didn't get too far into the game um, so, yeah, this is another game I didn't really play back in the day. I haven't played too much of it currently either. Um, again, I like first-person shooters, but I uh, just never played a lot of uh, Unreal. I did play a lot of Quake. Um, never got through that game. I uh, played a lot of Quake 2 as well. Never got through that game, but I think I got further in Quake 2. I did in Quake 1. I, I was more of a strategy. I was playing a lot of like Civilization and SimCity and those kind of games. Um, and of, of Doom, Doom 1 and 2. I did beat those back in the day. So I did play other games and Sim games. But um, yeah, I was probably more of a console gamer uh, back in the late 90s. Uh, or at least the mid 90s and early 90s. I was more of a console gamer than I was. Uh, computer game. I didn't like heavily start playing more computer games probably until at least the late 90s. So yeah, Unreal's kind of one I missed uh, back when it came out. Yep, so that's it for uh, gameplay. And uh, that's kind of that for this machine. Um, yes, I do know the Sony drive is not period correct, but uh, 
you know, <laughs> it was Sony, it's the Sony theme. So yeah, um, overall, I mean, it's not a terrible machine. Um, the built-in Rage 3D chip uh, isn't that great. Uh, we saw a lot of games that had little glitches and issues. Um, so yeah, not the greatest, uh, you know, but there are available PCI slots on here, so it would not be hard at all to uh, throw in a different discrete video card and uh, really, you know, kick this thing up another notch. Uh, you also see right there, that little spot <laughs> was kind of bothering me, so I stuck on a nice uh, Pentium MMX badge. I couldn't really find an appropriate badge, though, for the actual spot right there where you should probably put a PC badge. But yeah, I, um, again, it's just a machine I just wanted to build. Didn't even really have a specific reason, but... Uh, I do hope you guys liked the video. Now, if you have any suggestions uh, for this build, let me know. This is probably a machine that I'm going to let go. I'm either going to give it to a friend or maybe uh, sell it off for a few bucks on Craigslist or something. So, uh, before I do that, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, things you want to see me do with this, uh, any discrete video cards maybe you'd like to see me install in this machine or... Uh, anything. Are you really curious about the sound chip on here? I can, uh, in the next video, if I do do another video on this machine, I'll make sure the sound is working appropriately. But yeah, uh, other than a, a 3DFX card, okay, we don't need another video of a Voodoo 1 or 2 in this thing. Uh, it's just not necessary. Um, doesn't really interest me right now. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see more of these kind of just random builds, not really any special purpose or anything. And, um, click subscribe or the bell thing or whatever, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one, guys.